Hi Dallas ISD parents, my name is Javier Giribet and you are joining me from home and today we're making a video to tell you about one of our newest and most awesome resources that we have at the at home learning website. Uh, these are the virtual field trips and I'll tell you all about what these are and how many there are and the different types. Uh, but before I do, I want to get into uh, the at home learning website real quick before we begin. Uh, the at home learning website is a website managed by our teaching and learning department. It is the central website for your student and for you uh, to know exactly what your students should be learning every week. If your student is in secondary school, if, if he's in middle school or high school, if he or she is in middle school or high school, um, this website provides all the portals and all the links to all the websites that the students should be in, uh, whether it's Google Classrooms or, or Blackboard for the students that are going to the PTEX or, or the early college high schools. Um, all the information that your secondary student needs to know, it's right there. Uh, and that's how they can access all the work that their teachers are giving them. If you have an elementary school uh, children uh, or child or children at your home who, uh, who are doing the lessons, um, the at-home learning website it gets updated regularly um, with weekly or daily lesson plans for your student who is learning at home. Um, for you uh, and for your student to continue their learning and not get not get behind. Uh, there are lessons, you know, for social sciences, for uh, math, for reading. There are even schedules for uh, educational TV programming that the uh, station KERA and Dallas ISD have partnered to show our students. So please, uh, I'll, I'll put the link right over here. Uh, so please, if you haven't yet, check out that website. Uh, and if you have checked out that website maybe once or twice, or you know you check it once a week, I encourage you to uh, you know sit down for like 10 to 15 minutes and spend a little bit of time on that website because there is some incredible stuff. There are obviously the educational resources that I just told you about, um, but there are also uh, social, um, social emotional learning uh, exercises that you can do with your student to, you know, uh, work through some stress. Uh, there are, like we're going to talk about today, the virtual field trips. Um, if your student has uh, dyslexia, there are specific lessons for the student to continue learning uh, during this time. There are a lot, a tons and tons of resources in this website. So if you haven't already, please just navigate it. You know, it takes about 10 minutes, but you will be thankful to know how much uh, is on this website for free just for your student. Um, so now let's talk about a little bit of the virtual field trips. I am going to share my screen with you to show you how to get to them. And I'm also going to show you a couple of the coolest ones. Uh, but please, uh, you know, by all means, if you have a, a laptop by hand or, or a computer or an iPad or anything, you know, you can access these anywhere. Uh, yeah, I mean, follow, you can follow along. But basically what these are, the virtual field trips is a new addition again by our um, teaching and learning department to the at home learning website. And uh, the, this, this site that I'm about to show you gives you almost 30 very different, varied um, virtual field trips and uh, educational activities that your student can engage. Uh, he or she will never get bored with these because there are so many different ones. They're all interactive and they are all amazing. I can guarantee you that. Um, there, there are, uh, like I said, there are over 30 links to virtual field trips, and these could be uh, historic, uh, you know, uh, social for social sciences, for STEM, uh, for art, and even for PE, even for physical education. Uh, you can check out Audible, which is a website that gives audiobooks, which they're giving audiobooks to children, uh, well, children audiobooks completely free. Or you could check out uh, this, some of the Smithsonian museums in Washington D.C. and you can virtually tour them. Uh, the, I mean, this you can, the students can spend hours and hours on this, and they can still learn a lot of cool stuff. So, without further ado, let's check out uh, how to get to this website. 
So in order to access the at home learning site, it's a very easy link and I'm going to put it right there. So you type uh, on any web browser, you go to tiny T I N Y dot C C slash student at home learning. Just like you see right here, tiny dot C C slash student at home learning and it'll take you automatically to our at-home learning website. You can also go to the dallasisd.org to our main page, uh, and you can access it from there. So on our Dallas ISD homepage, you see here the announcements, uh, and if you click a couple times or you wait for it to come, it says at-home learning, you press learn more, and it'll take you to that exact same website. Again, it's tiny.cc slash student at-home learning, and it'll take you to this website. Um, this is our at-home learning site. So, like I said, if you haven't been to this website or if you've only been a couple times or if you only check out the plan for the week and you don't, please uh, try to spend a little more time on this website. There is so much like elementary resources for elementary school students, uh, re helpful resources for parents, library resources, etc. You can spend a little bit of time on this website and it'll go a long way. Uh, however, we're going to talk today about uh, the virtual field trips. So right here on the home page of the student at home learning, you go down and uh, there's all this information. And right under the clever portal, it says, yes, we have virtual field trips. There's this little school bus. So right over here, you can click on the link that says click the virtual field trip icon or you can click here and it'll automatically take you to the virtual field trip uh, website. Uh, if you want, if you're one of those person people that would like to type it on the Google browser, uh, dallasisd.org slash page slash six four zero seven four, it'll take you to that exact website. Um, so here we are. Now you see uh, these rectangles, these options that say STEM, literacy, zoos and aquariums, arts and culture, and physical health and wellness. So. Uh, these, every time you click a rectangle, it'll show you the resources available for that specific subject. So, like I said, we have several and we have over 30 of these links uh, all over the page. So, you can spend a little bit of time here in the virtual field trips section and check out what we have. Um, so, every time you click one of these, you see the resources there are, you know, the literacy, you see a few, and we're going to go over a few of these. I, I unfortunately don't have the whole time to go over each and every single one, uh, but I'll show you the ones that I liked uh, a lot. So, here under Arts and Culture, uh, I'm going to show you one of my favorite ones, and this is a trip, or a, vi a virtual field trip, to the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C., and uh, this is my favorite one because I actually went to that museum and I was mind blown to see this. So it takes you when you click this button or, you know, either the picture or the link, it takes you to this website, uh, which is, like I said, the Smithsonian uh, National Museum of Natural History. Uh, and there's tours where you can almost as if you're physically in the museum, you go to permanent exhibits and it automatically takes you to the entrance of the museum. And like I said, I was here. It looks exactly like this, but, you know, with a lot less people. This museum is closed, like everything else. However, you can basically be in there through a 360 camera that they put. And you can see not only, not only the exhibits that they have, but this beautiful place that, you know, they built for this amazing museum in, in, in our nation's capital. So uh, for this one, for the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History, the, right over here you have the ground floor, the first floor, and the second floor. So let's say we're gonna, and, and, and there's different exhibits in each floor. So let's say we go to the first floor and we wanna see the ocean exhibit. So right here, all of these little buttons are different sections of the museum. And you click it and it takes you, um, you know, you close this and it takes you to that exact place where, where, you know, in the museum where all of this is. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, uh, you can read the text, see, see a little bit of the different types of things that they have in the museum. Um, but look, I mean, they, they have a, they have a, a whale over here. You can, you can see all this stuff uh, completely free.
just by clicking this link and exploring. And uh, this museum, you can spend a whole day in the museum and you don't get to see everything. It's so big. So this is the cool part. This is available uh, at, at any time just with an internet connection. Or you can see it from a phone or from a computer. You know, you can probably appreciate this from a bigger screen, uh, from a laptop or from a computer. But look, I mean, this is, this is a beautiful museum. Uh, uh, you can access it and tour it. And just like this one, uh, there are several ones. There's the Met or the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Uh, there's the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. And there are several others. So you can spend so, or you and your child can spend so much time. There's Yellowstone National Park, you know, exploring. And, and, and that's what this is about, you know. This adds to the learning that they're already doing from the TV channels, from the activities that they're, the, the, ch the children are getting, and from the stuff uh, that their teachers are, are, are teaching them online. This adds to it, and it's completely free and completely available and completely district approved. So please check out one of these. I'm going to show you another one uh, that I found that it was really cool. So that was under Arts, Arts and Culture. Uh, but if you go to STEM, uh, there are, I think there are, STEM has probably the most resources available out of here. Uh, and it has some local ones, you know, like the Fort Worth Museum of Science and History or like the Dallas Museum, like the Perot Museum of Nature and Science in Dallas. They have some locals and they have some national ones. So if we go to the Perot, um, you know, it takes you to this website and um, they have uh, these educational videos and lessons they have lessons per week so since this is pretty much the third week that you know the schools have been closed they have three weeks worth of content posted on their website uh, and you know you go here you can you can go to the whole lesson and you can see these videos that their in-house scientists are doing where they are explaining things to you know about physics and chemistry or weather and nature or paleontology to your students. So this is a pretty cool resource too. And this is, like I said, a local museum, the Perot Museum of Nature and Science. So please, uh, you know, check if you if you want if if you if you see that in the lesson plan there's a lessons of of regarding physics and chemistry. You can go to this website and show your student a little more a little more information. Uh, provided by the museum scientists and even you know and even if you don't have a lesson that's requiring physics and science you can check these like i said you know every week they release some new content so this is a great resource and a great local resource now uh, i'm going to show you another cool one that i really liked national geographic kids um this it's not so much a tour, a virtual tour, but it's a, a virtual science lab. So you can see, like, like it says here, experiments, videos, and articles. Um, and they are showing you uh, on video how to do... Uh, how how to do how to do experiments at home with household items. So. Not only do students, you know, get to learn about these sciencey things, but they get to do them and understand them in a whole different level at their house with household items. So this is one, uh, you know, the ghost globe, and they tell you exactly, you know, exactly what you need. It's completely safe. Uh, they're not going to blow up the kitchen or anything crazy. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you see every you, you, you see you see step by step how to do this experiment that will teach students about about chemical reactions, about science. They explain you what's going on. And these are available to you right on right over here. And like I said, just like the uh, the, Natu the Museum of Natural History or just like this one, there are so many resources uh, that you can access that are free, that are going to keep your students engaged in learning and entertained. Uh, and and they, these are going to be hands-on learning, a lot of them. Uh, so please give it a look. Uh, we're almost done. But lastly, I want to show you one that to me is completely uh, amazing. And this is not, uh, again, this is not a tour per se. Uh, however, here under literacy, you know, it is very important that your students are reading, you know, and are engaged with literature and reading during this time. So here is, uh, you know, here are uh, about four literacy resources that they're offering here. And this is one that really blew my mind. 
So Audible, if you've heard of Audible, it's a audiobook streaming co uh, company. Uh, you know, like it says here by Amazon, but it's a it's a book it's a book streaming company, an audiobook streaming company. So, uh, you know, you in order to use Audible, you have to regularly you you would have to pay a membership, a monthly membership, and and get to listen to audiobooks. However, uh, just like it says here, all stories are free to stream uh, uh, for students. You know, for as long as schools are closed, all all children's stories. This collection is free to stream. And that is a huge deal. Because if you go here, you see that there are hundreds, I'm not even kidding, hundreds of different audiobooks to stream for your kids. Um, so if they if they had, you know, if they if they done their learning lessons uh, uh, and they instead of watching TV or if you're if you're going on a, on, a, on, a, on a long drive and your your kid is coming with you or if you and, you know, you are you just with a pair of headphones, that would make it better. But you know, just with a smartphone and and a pair of headphones, if you want, you can you can have your student and even you listen to some amazing books uh, read to you. You know, while you're driving, while you wait somewhere, while your student, you know, instead of instead of watching TV or something, you can have him relax with a pair of headphones, listening to some of the most amazing stories like Harry Potter. So if you go to one of these tabs, you can see that there are Harry Potter, you know, the first book in English and in Spanish. Uh, and your student can uh, hear chapter by chapter read to him or her uh, for free, completely for free while schools are closed. Um, there, uh, this is a pretty cool one too that I saw. Uh, you know, there's elementary uh, school. There's for, for there's for teens. There's uh, literary classics for students in high school. But this one was pretty cool. In elementary, you can find uh, Alice Adventures in Wonderland read to you by Scarlett Johansson. You know, the actress that uh, plays the Black Widow in the Avengers, Scarlett Johansson. That's who's reading this book. I already checked it out and verified that's her. And it is amazing. It is amazing that this resource is for free to all of our students. And they can spend hours. Just, just look at this. In elementary school, there's 102 books. So the students can spend hours. Hours and hours, uh, you know, he listening, streaming these children's books that are are, are approved, are, are good, you know, are good stories are for them. So please check it out. And uh, that concludes this video. So again, just uh, go to this website. There is so much more than that. I just I was barely able to cover some part of uh, virtual field trips. But there are over 30. So please give it a look. And again, parents, if you are not completely familiar with the at-home learning website, it has these amazing resources like the virtual field trips, but there is so much more. So please just take about 10 minutes of your time, uh, go to the website tiny.cc slash student at home learning. And, you know, we'll put all the websites here for you to check out. And please, you know, spend some time checking out the, the, the parent resources there are or learning of the social emotional learning um, videos and, and activities that you can do with your family. And of course, you know, these amazing resources like the uh, virtual field trips. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, I hope this information was helpful. If you find that some of these that are amazing, please drop them in the comments, suggest to other parents some of the content that you're seeing here and that you like. Uh, and well, we'll see you next time. Thanks.